Well, we asked to speak to the BBC, ITV and the government, but they didn't want to put anyone up to talk about this. But now I am joined by the SNP's Culture, Media and Sports spokeswoman in Westminster, Hannah Bardell, MP. Uh, good evening uh, to you, Hannah uh, Bardell. First of all, isn't it reasonable to assume that when it comes to negotiation, it's either going to be Conservative or Labour, so they are the main two that should be on that stage? I think what we've heard from the programme up until now has become far too much about what individual politicians mm -hmm. may or may not want. And the reality is that you know we've had devolution in the UK for you know 20 years. The broadcasters need to catch up with that. This isn't difficult. The SNP are the largest party uh, in Scotland at Westminster. We have 35 MPs. We've won the last two elections uh, at Westminster in Scotland. We are in charge in government in Scotland and have been for over 10 years. But it is our democratic right to be involved in those debates. But and if it is the democratic duty of the broadcasters mm -hmm. to make to sure that all voices, not just the SNP, but the devolved nations and Leave and Remain are represented uh, yeah, and, and respected. hard Brexiteers and um, people's vote and so forth. And I wonder, you know, that the people's vote have actually put in a formal complaint, yeah. both the BBC and Ofcom. Well, no, good on them. The deal is the only deal on the table. Would you take part in the debate and call and complain, make a formal complaint if you weren't going to be included? Well, I think we've got a little while to go before you know, the final decision days. on that. Well, not long and, and quite incredible that the broadcasters didn't get around the table and think about this sooner. Well, but none, nonetheless, this is, this is not difficult. The reality is that we have had in previous general elections uh, the rainbow of different parties. And you saw it. I mean, it was like seven or eight people. And it was people. really positive. But, you know, what we know from the public it, is they are fed up of the binary nature of UK politics. It's stuck in the past. But, and we must reflect, and the broadcasters must reflect, the range but, of voices and views on this issue and across the UK in terms of devolution. But, we have but, four but, nations. Do you accept? They need to be represented. And also, we were told Scotland voted by 62% to leave the EU and we've been told that we're going to be dragged out against our will. 62% UK to remain, you mean? It, Sorry, yes, 62% <laughs> yeah. to remain, my apologies. We voted 62% to yes, remain but we're, and we're going to be taken are... out against our will. And in a UK-wide... We were told that that was a UK-wide vote and we have to be dragged out against our will, but in a UK-wide debate, we're not allowed to be part of that. I'm sorry. That just doesn't cut it, and you can't have it all into the middle. I mean, I mean, you say that these debates before were very, uh, you know, energising or whatever. It was crazy. There were seven people. It's very hard. Can you imagine on the nature of what's being discussed on Brexit with a deal on the table and the only deal on the table, if every single part of it is unpicked in a debate, what is the public going to think? I think the public really enjoyed the fact that they got to see different voices, different perspectives. Brexit is a hugely complex issue and it's a democratic travesty that people didn't get properly informed so, until after the event. So, this debate allows the opportunity to, for it to be opened up to respect the nature of devolution. But the because voters it is can't to, vote. There is no vote. We've, we've, we're so beyond that now. There's so no what, vote. So, well, and we also, well, we also have the ridiculous situation that both Theresa May and Jeremy Corbyn aren't in favour of the single market and customs union. So what's the point well, of having two of them on? You might as well just have one each on each channel. That's a ridiculous argument. If you follow the logic through, we have to make sure so, that all of those views are respected. It is a complex issue. I think that the broadcasters can get together. We can come up with a sensible solution. And so you Otherwise, back the idea of the debate. Sorry, just, just yes or no. You actually back the idea of a debate per se. Oh, absolutely. We absolutely back right. the idea of okay. a debate. We were part of the, the petition that Sky put together that's now got over 100,000 supporters mm -hmm. to have uh, television debates as part of the democratic process, as a standard part of elections. And, and we're going to come know. along to talk about that. But just if this government collapses, would the SNP give confidence uh, to Jeremy Corbyn only if he said he would grant a second referendum? That's been discussed, hasn't it? Well, there, on independence, look, sorry, not on, the, or not on the EU. I'm talking about Scottish independence. If, uh, would you support Jeremy Corbyn if he agreed a second independence referendum for Scotland? Well, I think that we have to wait and see what happens. I mean, at the end of the day, we have said, we said at the last two elections that we would work as a progressive force at Westminster. We have to see what's put on mm -hmm. the table. We have to see, I mean, at the moment, Jeremy Corbyn doesn't even back being in the EU. He doesn't know what his policy is. His party is all over the place. But there is good cross-party work happening behind the scenes to stay in the single market and customs union. The SNP is very focused on that. Thank you and very much, Hannah Bardem. I'm afraid I have to fi finish you off here because we have two guests here in the studio. I'm joined by two people who have been involved in TV debates 
on both sides of the camera for good and ill. Sky News' Adam Bolton and Aisha Hazarika, former advisor to Ed Miliband, who helped him prep for his debates in 2015. Uh, good evening uh, to both of you. You heard there what Hannah was saying, that it, it's all for one and one for all. She wants everybody in. Um, the Sky debates originally were quite clean. What do you make of the idea that we're going to have all shades of a uh, Brexit discussion? Well, I think we ought to remember that if Jeremy Corbyn and Theresa May alone face off to each other, it would never have happened before. So, mm. from our point of view, that is a, a major development in uh, broadcasting, if you like. But uh, the other thing we have to remember, as you rightly pointed out, there's not an election in the offing. This is a programme aimed at the people. The people don't actually have a, yeah, have a I say suppose, in this. I suppose, so, I suppose Theresa yeah. May's uh, judgment is that suddenly there'll be you know, lots of uh, outpourings from the public after these debates, you know, telling their MPs yeah. to get on with it and back Brexit. Well, you know, I've, I've been organizing, trying to get debates going, I think, you know, going back into the <laughs> 1980s. And I remember Michael Dobbs, you know, he of House of Cards, yes. when he was working with the Tories, he said the easiest way to stop debates happening is to pit the broadcasters against each other. And, of course, this is what's happening yeah, now. Yeah, with, with a very short time span. Which is why we want this we, Independent Debates Commission. We don't have because, two years that Theresa May's had yeah. the Brexit. We've got ten days. Exactly. So, uh, Aisha, good idea or bad idea in principle to have these debates at all? I think the problem is it's intellectually incoherent right now because this is not an election campaign. Normally, you would have leaders' debates. Ideally, you'd watch the two people that are vying for that top job to be Prime Minister. This is a very, very different situation. We know that Brexit transcends party lines in both the main parties. Very sympathetic to the SNP argument about the other nations and regions. And of course, and also I'm within Labour itself. Absolutely. And I think, you know, while I'm within a Tories, I mean, absolutely, it, it transcends but both par all parties. Are, well, two, the big two parties are divided on it. It's incoherent because Theresa May is trying to get into our living rooms mm -hmm. as the public to say, look, what do you think of Brexit? Yet she won't let us have a vote on it so it doesn't make any sense and the problem is if it's Theresa May and Jeremy Corbyn I think that will be quite a kind of it will be quite an unsatisfactory debate because these issues there's so many different issues of Brexit to be um, teased out and also in the rhythm of an election campaign you have you know every party has a grid you use the debates actually to kind of give a bit of um, you know, uh, sort of punctuate the rhythm of the campaign, climaxing and ideally also, and also in their big hard, two hard kind of prep, way. as you did for Ed Miliband, a lot of prep. Oh, the prep is extraordinary. I mean, we had days and days and days. We had weekends away. We were flying in people from America. I mean, oh my it God, was, you did a lot of money. It was a it was a lot of time and money well, to do it properly. Adam, what do you make of the BBC today, kind of tweeting out about this? You know, getting involved in a way that it hasn't. Before. Well, what's happened as far as we know is that. First of all, this is in Mrs May's gift, yeah. which I would argue it shouldn't be, which yeah. is why you should have why a debates should have commission. This debates commission. Yeah. But yes. once she said that, she went round the broadcasters and said, what do you propose? And the problem is that Jeremy Corbyn, who accepted her challenge, liked what ITV are offering, yeah. she likes what the BBC are offering, and we've got a standoff. And unless one of them gives way and goes with the other's plan, it's the public that's going to lose out because they're not going to see this debate. And, and, what, and, and, and tell me on this idea... Uh, that there's a formal complaint by the People's Vote campaign, both to Ofcom and to the BBC. Would that hold water? I don't think so. We're not in an election period. No. And, you know, the other point about this debate is we think, you know, we've been campaigning for debates at election time because Parliament is not sitting. But, but do you agree with Parliament's going to debate this for five but do, you agree with, do you agree with Aisha that actually it's not, it's not going to be very illuminating uh, with just Jeremy Corbyn and Theresa May because actually those positions are not the positions well, of the parties? no, because I think it's how you produce it, isn't yeah. it? This is where our well, professionalism yes. comes into it, if I you know. like. And clearly, we don't really know what Jeremy Corbyn thinks about Europe. A no deal Brexit or Europe, indeed. <laughs> we don't really know uh, whether either of them, in the end, would go, really would go gonna, for and a second would you referendum. Do, would, you, would you put a hard Brexiteer on? Would you put Jacob Rees Mogg on? This is why I think you, you have to. This is why it's in, you know, with all the respect to the great kind of production teams and the great kind of anchor people in this. This is not going to satisfy anybody because you have to have different ranges. And in terms of the people's vote, there is a growing view that people do want to have a final say on this. And also, the other thing, if it's just Jeremy Corbyn and Theresa May, Theresa May will want to talk about the nerdy details of this deal. Jeremy Corbyn will want to talk about austerity. He will actually want to use this to sort of pivot away from a kind of narrow Brexit debate. I don't think it will shine any light on the issue. I don't think it will help us as a country to move on. It won't give us the closure that we and also And with seven or eight people, will it just be a Ramy? 
Well, I, it's, I, 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 you know, I would actually think, I think, it, I think Adam's point is right. We need a proper commission to set this up. Yeah, to never going to get that, but no, no, in no. a way, but in a way, I think it would be better to sort of not have these. Ways. I think it could actually harm your campaign in the long run if this is a dog's well, dinner. Well, except there's a crucial aspect yeah. which helps the campaign is Mrs May has finally said she wants to do debates. And, oh, if, yeah, uh, uh, and the, it'd be difficult know, for her to duck well, the next time She might not round. be around next the, time yeah, round. Yeah. Thank the you both very much indeed. The last time she debated was her husband on the one show and it didn't, was not very illuminating, let's Thanks be honest. Thanks very much indeed.